We're going to read two verses there. I'll read verse 39 and invite you to read verse 40 out loud with me. Deuteronomy 4, verses 39 and 40. We'll read 40 all together. <clears throat> the Bible says, Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it might go well with thee, and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together this evening. We thank you for giving us your word and keeping it pure and perfect. I pray, God, that you would meet with us. I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak through the preaching of your word, speak to every, every one of our hearts and to every one of our needs. And Lord, there's no way I could possibly know all the needs represented here tonight, and thus I, I cannot speak to them myself. But even as I speak to their ears, I ask that you would speak to their hearts as you do know uh, everything that everybody's facing and the greatest needs. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated tonight. I'm going to ask, I don't usually do this every once in a while, but, but uh, tonight I'm going to ask for a little bit of help at the beginning. Um, what makes heaven, heaven? In other words, when what comes to mind when someone mentions the word heaven? What comes to the imagination? There's a, you didn't know there was going to be a pop quiz tonight, did you? Uh, so there's, when, when I say what comes to mind, that doesn't mean there's there's a wrong answer because whatever it is that comes to mind, that's what comes to mind. You know, what comes to mind is it's a, it's a bright place where there's no pain. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no suffering. Okay, no pain, no suffering? That's good. Peaceful. Peaceful? All right. How about purity? Mm -hmm. Um and, and, and we'll stay here just a minute or so. So if something else comes to mind, feel free to, to, to add in. Um, when, we, when we think about heaven, the holiness, perfection. Some people might think, well, that's where the angels are. And I say, we know there's some there. I talked yeah. to the kids this morning that all your neighbors are good neighbors and, <laughs> and they're all saved. So the yeah, the the, the the population there's no bad side of town. <laughs> all good neighbors. Uh, I wrote down here that's where the saints are, that's where where the saved that have passed away up until this point, that's where they're located. Um, that's where Jesus is. My favorite thing. That's where the Father is, uh, God the Father, and Jesus seated at, at the right hand of God the Father. Um, I want us to change focus a little bit, and and we'll go back. We won't turn there right now, but we can think about the first couple chapters in the book of Genesis where it describes God creating everything, and then there's an area of the world that he called Eden over on the east side of that region called Eden, he planted a very specific garden. We call that the Garden of Eden. Really, it should be called the Garden in Eden. Um, in that garden, he, he put all manner of trees and fruit and herb-yielding uh, plants, and, and he also placed Adam. And then the Bible says he put Adam to sleep and took the rib out of him and formed woman out of that. never says anything about waking him up. And uh, my sister really likes this. Men have been walking around asleep ever since then. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, but uh, uh, so Adam and Eve were in that garden. And and a lot a lot of times we think of that as heaven like. Right? I mean, I'm talking about before sin entered into the world. And we don't know how much time there was between them being put in the garden and them being kicked out of the garden. Uh, but we know they were there for, for at least some time. And it may have been minutes, it may have been hours, days, years. We, we don't know the exact time, but we know they were there for a while. And we read, the, we read about those conditions, and, and a lot of times when we imagine that garden in Eden, 
many of the same words come to mind. Peacefulness. And, and a, a perfection, a, a, a perfect harmony. I mean, they, they didn't have to worry about being torn asunder by wild animals. All the animals that ever were there. Adam named them all. God called. He made them all parade right in front of him. And whatever he named them, that, that was their name. I mean, he, he called the horse, horse. What if he had called the horse, George? <laughs> then we would, we would call horses, George. <laughs> that would be the name for him. And so whatever he named, whatever name he gave to that animal, God said, okay, I'll agree with that. I, you know, I put that under your authority there. And uh, it was a pure place. There was, there was no crime there. There was, you know, uh, they didn't have any human neighbors. It was just the two of them. So Adam looked at his next door neighbor, Eve, and he said, I kind of like her. And uh, she looked at him and said, he's the best husband on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and, and they were both right. Uh, it was a place that we would say of, of perfection. It was a place where God visited at a certain time to spend time with Adam and Eve. And so we, we, we look at Eden and say, in many ways, it was heaven-like, but here on earth. So the question arises then, what is it that makes heaven, heaven? And I think we find one of the answers to that in this, in this, and in, in, uh, again, we think about heaven, we, all these different words come to mind, and, and a lot of those same words could apply to the Garden of Eden before Adam sinned. Um, but what makes heaven, heaven, is that the Lord is God there, and God is the Lord there. And, and, and you know, prior to... <clears throat> Somebody said, yeah, Eve, she ate Adam out of house and home. Uh, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Eve that brought sin into the world. It was by one man that sin entered in the world. But what made Eve, Eden, that garden in Eden, heaven-like, was that the Lord was God there. And God was the Lord there. When we think about Lord, that's a, that's a title of authority. And, and it's a title of, of, of someone to whom we are submitting. You know, people say, he's going to lord it over everybody, meaning he's exercising his authority over people. And, and they are submitting to that authority. And, and God is to be the Lord. We're supposed to have, here's one of the, the problems. When, when uh, Pilate said, do you want me to release Jesus, the king of the Jews? And the Jews said, we have no king but Caesar. They didn't recognize God as their king. They didn't recognize Jesus as God. And they rejected him. And they said, we'll adopt Caesar as our king over him. It was a dark day in the history of the nation of Israel right then. But uh, uh, what is it that makes heaven heaven? Well, God is God there. God is the Lord there. The Lord is God there. And then everything that he says... You know, nobody says, well, I just don't think it ought to be run that way. <laughs> well, he says, I'm going to write a, a, a book of things you'll never hear in heaven. Hmm. It's not the way I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, uh, I don't know if I agree with that or not. Let's contrast earth right now with what heaven is like right now. And one of the reasons earth is the way it is right now is because there's a lot of people saying about what God says, I wouldn't do it that way. I just, I, I, I don't know if I agree with that. I just don't think, I, I, I know the Bible and I just don't know if, I don't know if I agree with all that. Well, that's why the world is what the world is. Amen. And if, if, if more of the world would say, it doesn't matter if I agree with it or not. It's what God said. That's the way we're going to do it. The world would be more like heaven. Because there's no controversy in heaven. God doesn't give an order only to find out a week later, 
Somebody didn't follow through with the order that he gave. He gives an order there, and, it, and what else would we do? Of course that's what's going to be done. There's no question. There's no matter of, of a difference of opinion. Because it's clear the people in heaven haven't figured out God is always right. And they've gotten to the point where, they, you know, hey, we kind of like it here. There's no way to possibly improve upon heaven. And so there's no need for a difference of opinion. Now, you and I might have a difference of opinion on a whole lot of things. And, and, and because of those differences, that might improve a certain situation. But in heaven, when somebody, when, when God says something, when God orders something, when God dictates something, nobody says, well, I think there's a better way to do that. There's, there's tasks that my dad gave me when I was a kid. He said, son, here's what I want you to do. And he'd see me doing it the hard way. And he let me struggle for a little while. And then he'd say, would you like an easier way to do that? Well, Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you a, a few tricks. I, I worked with a, uh, for a guy once, and, and he'd, he'd say, go out there and do this, and I'd go out and start working on it, and some tool I'd never used before, and he'd say, here, let me show you a trick I learned in the Orient. He had never been to the Orient. Uh, but it was just a, a, a little easier way to do that. When you get to heaven, there's no easier way to do but what God says to do. And that's one of the things, that's, that's the big thing that makes heaven, heaven. As soon as the Lord wasn't God over that garden in Eden, as soon as God wasn't the Lord there, it ceased to be heaven-like. See, the result of what, of when they said, you know what, we're not going to do the way God said it. I know God said, don't eat of that fruit. I'm going to eat of it anyways. I know God said, I would die if I ate that fruit. And Satan came along and said, you're not really going to die if you eat that fruit. Well, who was right? Because Adam's not around here anymore. He died. Mm -hmm. He instantly died spiritually. And then years later, he died physically. Until that fruit had been eaten of, there had been no death. Sin entered in this world, or I'm sorry, death entered into this world by way of sin. Before sin, there was no death. And so up until that fruit had been eaten, everything and everybody was going to live forever. Adam ate of it, and he lost that. And he lost it for all of us because we're all descendants. We were all born of him. I don't know, it's, it's many, many generations ago, but uh, you can trace it. Everybody's family tree goes back to that one root. Know therefore this day. This is what God says. He says, you need to know this. And you need to know it today. And you need to, and he says, and consider it in thine heart. This is something that you go over and over and over and over. That you don't allow yourself to be distracted by other things. You turn the phone off. You turn the TV off. You turn the computer off. You, 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 you turn all these things out. He said, this is something you need to get down and get it settled and get it worked over in your heart. That the Lord, He is God in heaven above. Yes. And so the, the, the I guess the title of the, of the message tonight is, Where is God Lord to you. Where, or where is the Lord God to you? Oh, well, God is God in heaven. And God's the Lord in heaven. But I'm not there yet, so... Until I get there, I'm just going to do things my way here. And God gives you that freedom. He gives you that freedom. He'll let you struggle. But you don't have to. He's always there. You know, there's a better way to do that. There's a way to do that that will lead to success. And the way you're doing it, and you, you, you 
can read in here. He says, the way you're doing it, it only leads to one place, failure. See, in, in your eyes, in your life, is God only Lord in heaven? Is heaven the only place where he is allowed to have authority as far as you're concerned? Is the Lord only God up there for you? And so many people think that, that God is God who lives way up there and doesn't really care. And that's just not the case. God sent forth his son into the world. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's one way for that everlasting life. Is God, is he God of your home? Or is he just God of heaven? Is he Lord over your home? Or is heaven the only place where he really has any authority? Is he Lord of your entertainment? Nobody's going to tell me what I do for fun. Okay. Go ahead and struggle. There is pleasure in sin for a season. So it's just, it runs out. Because sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. This is not something I came up with. This has been declared by God. There's no other choice. See, Eve took it. That, she looked at that fruit and she said, well, that fruit looks good. And she started salivating a little bit. And she said, it'll make me smarter. I came out with a study a few years back. I don't know, maybe several years ago now. There's something in blueberries. They said, that'll make you smarter. I told my wife, load up. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> The, the study was done on beagle dogs, so I don't, it made our dogs smarter, but I, I don't know if it worked on me or not. Um, but they said that they, they gave, they had the two groups of beagles, and over here this group just got regular dog food, and over here this group got the same dog food, but with blueberries on it. And they said this group with blueberries on it, they can learn tricks more easily and quickly than the blueberry deficient group. <laughs> Nobody's going to tell me what to do, what to take in. Well, there, you might enjoy the forbidden things, the sinful things for a season. There might be some pleasure in it, but when it runs out, it will bring forth death. Eve said, I like the look of that fruit. It'll make me smarter. And she took that fruit and she ate it. And then she handed some over to Adam. Now Eve, the Bible says, was deceived. She was tricked. Adam took that fruit and knowing full well what he was doing, he ate it anyways. We say, what's the big deal? And see, that's the problem with us is we don't take sin as seriously as God does. You know, if we looked at that from a, from a crime point of view, let's say you had a pear bush, a pear tree, not bushes, but a pear tree out in the front yard where you live. And after school one day, some kid's walking home from school and of course, he's been in school all day and, and it's just worn him out and he's hungry and he can't wait those four more houses to get home, he needs, there's a pear. And so he reaches up and he grabs a pear off of your tree. And you run out and stop him and you got your cell phone and you're dialing 911. And they say, 911, what's the emergency? I caught a 10-year-old kid stealing a pear off of my tree. Red-handed. In fact, he's got two. He put one in his backpack and had a bite taken out of the other one. Sir, what, what's the emergency? He stole from me. And they're going to say, call us when there's a real emergency. What did he steal? Well, he stole two pears off of my tree. 
Is this some grand prize, super duper hybrid, one of a kind pear tree? No, it's uh, what at Myers last year. So it's just a regular pear tree? Yeah. Click. The police aren't going to show up for that. If you happen to flag a policeman down and say, this kid stole some pears from me, the cop's going to say, uh, kid, go home and don't do that anymore. They're not going to arrest him. They're not going to put him in juvie for stealing two pears off of a tree. I'm not saying that that tree was a pear tree. It was some fruit that we don't know what the fruit was. But because of, at the most two, maybe she took a bite out of the one and handed the same one over to him. We don't know. At the most, it was two fruit. God said, I'm willing to condemn all humanity of all time, you two and everybody else, the billions from here on out, to hell. Because of that. You think, really? What's the big deal? It's sin. God said, don't do it. He said, I got, Adam said, I got to, I'm going to do it anyways. And he sinned. Now, God didn't just condemn everybody. He said, I'm going to give you a way out. You're not going to be able to get yourself out. I'll have to be the one to get you out. And that's why Jesus died on the cross for us. He died to pay the price for our sin. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The wages, the penalty, the payment required for sin, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, is God, the Lord of your relationships? Is God the Lord of, of marriage? Is God the Lord of your attitude? Is God the Lord of your mind? Is God the Lord of your heart? Is God the Lord of your vocabulary? Is God the Lord of your schedule? No one's going to tell me where to be, when to be. I like what that one kid said. I'm tired of the teachers telling me what to do and the principal tells me what to do and mom tells me what to do. Dad tells me what to do. My grandparents tell me what to do. I can't wait till I graduate. I'm going to join the Marines. Hmm. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I worked with a guy. He said, he said, my theory is everybody should, should spend a year in the military straight out of high school. Just everybody has to go in. Hmm. He said, everybody should know how to make a bed. <laughs> And, and maybe it'd be a help. But the reality is, the Bible didn't just say, know therefore this day and consider it in thy heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above. It goes on to say, and upon the earth beneath. Not just as he God not just as he lord up there, he owns this too. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Not just this big old ball flying through space. Everything on it belongs to him. We all, we, we're not our own. We're breathing his air. We eat the food that he created and he made. He still owns it all. We live in houses that are made out of materials belong to him. And the sooner you find out that where God is God and the Lord is Lord, that place is heaven-like regardless of the surroundings or the environment. See, when when we actually take a look at the description of what heaven is like and we look at the description of what Eden is like, well, I think Eden has a lot more trees, although there are some trees in heaven. There is some water in heaven. Uh, we can read that. The Bible talks about several rivers going through where Eden was. Uh, <clears throat> but then there's a lot of other things that, that seem to be different. Heaven has the throne room of God. Eden didn't have that. There's no night in heaven. In Eden, we have the evening and the morning or the first day and the evening and the morning or the second day. God knows how long a day is. 
But we can say Eden was heaven-like up until somebody decided, I'm not going to let God be God here. I'm not going to let God be the Lord here. And God said, guess what? You don't get to stay there. And Adam and Eve were cast out. Unless they turn around and try to go back in, he said, I'm going to put an angel, I'm going to put a flaming sword here to keep you out that turns each way and, and you're not going to be able to get back in. And then that whole region was destroyed in the flood uh, several generations later. But as long as God is allowed to be the Lord, see, we, can, we don't have to wait to get to heaven to have a taste and a little bit of heaven here. All we have to do is allow God to be the Lord here. If I let God be the Lord, if I, if I allow him to have authority over my household, I can have a little bit of heaven in my household. I don't have to wait till I get there. Like, I, I already have, I've already got my ticket, but I'm not in a hurry to get on the next bus heading that way. <laughs> so in, in the meantime, God didn't just want us to have heaven there. He said, there's a way you can have it here now. And so he said in verse 40, Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. I'd like to live longer. Well, God said, I've got some rules that'll help you with that. No, I want to do it my way. Well, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Let me let me give one one specific area, and we'll finish. There's a lot of people they're trying to work their own way into heaven. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me." He said, if you want to get to heaven, there's only one way. It's not you. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. I was watching, there's a family that has a, a YouTube channel, and, and uh, uh, their kids kind of started it, and now mom and dad have gotten more involved in it. But they were talking last night. Somebody was asking them about salvation and, and eternal security, and, and they were trying to present this, well, you can be good and you can obey the commandments and that'll get you into heaven. And the man said, no, the commandments were not given as a way to get into heaven. The commandments, the Bible tells us the commandments serve as a mirror. The law serves as a mirror. You know, a mirror doesn't wash your face. It shows you where it's dirty. Mm -hmm. If you want to shave, don't use a mirror to cut the whiskers. The mirror will show you where the whiskers are. You use something else to watch. You use something else to shave. The mirror just shows you where it needs to be done. The law does not get us to heaven. It shows us you can't get yourself to heaven. God said, hear, O Israel. He said, listen. The Lord thy God is one God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Have you ever yielded to somebody or something else before you yielded to God? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Would you, would you consider using your mom's name as a curse word? But how many times have people taken the name of God and used it as a curse word or combined it with a, with a curse word? They've taken his name in vain. They've blasphemed the name of God. It's something he takes very seriously. So I, I, I don't say it, I just write OMG. <clears throat> which brings the thought of you're conveying that communication to somebody else. Same thing. You looked upon somebody to lust after him. Jesus said, if you do that, you've committed adultery in your heart. You think God's going to let a, an adulterer who's blasphemed his name to go right into heaven? Well, he'll weigh my good with my bad. He was willing to condemn all humanity over the theft of one fruit. 
and, and by the way, up till that point, Adam had all 100% good on one side of the scale and one bad on the other. If it was scales, he'd have been okay. It's not scales. The wages of sin, one sin, is enough to condemn to hell. And God said, I'm not going to leave you without hope. I will provide myself the remedy to your problem. Why? Because God does love us. God has a, he's justice, but he's also love. His justice has to be satisfied. So Jesus said, I'll satisfy the justice. You can pour out the punishment on me. I'll hang on the cross and die. I'll shed my blood so you don't have to take theirs. So Jesus died for us. He said, that's the way. How do I get to heaven? You take everything you have as far as your belief and you put it in Jesus. I'm, I'm counting completely on Jesus. What he did on the cross, believing that he died for my sin and that he rose again from the dead. And based on that belief, I'm going to ask him to save me. God said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's my part? My part is calling, believing, and asking. His part is the saving. Well, I don't know if I have enough faith for that. You do. He already gave you enough. You just have to bring it to him. Let's stand tonight. Every head bowed, every eye closed. All around the world, there's people trying to make their own way to heaven. I'm, I'm just going to be a better person. That's good that you want to be a better person, but that won't get you to heaven. God has to be the God of that. And the only way to heaven is through Jesus. Let God be the Lord of your salvation. So it is done right. See, where you let God be Lord, things become more heaven-like. Oh, but I don't live in heaven. I live here, I live there, wherever. The Garden of Eden wasn't heaven, but it was heaven-like. Until they said, we're not going to let him be the Lord here. We're not going to let him do it this way. Let me ask a question. I know one's looking around. This is not to embarrass anybody. I'd just like to pray for you. I wonder if tonight you could say, I remember a time when I got saved, when I placed my faith in Jesus for my salvation. If I were to die right now, I know 100% sure I'd go to heaven. Would you just raise your hand? Maybe you couldn't raise your hand. Maybe your statement would be more something like this. I'm not sure I'd go to heaven, but I'd like to know. Would you pray for me? I won't. I promise I won't embarrass you in any way. I would just like to pray for you. Anyone like that? I'm not sure. Would you just raise slip your hand up right where you are? Pray for me. All right. All right. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. You loved us even while we were yet sinners. You loved us enough to send Jesus to die for our sins that we might have a way to get into heaven. I pray tonight for those that raise their hands that they're not sure, but they'd like to know. God, I pray your Holy Spirit would deal and work in their hearts in such a way that they would get saved so that they could say today, just as the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The piano's going to play. If you'd like to get saved right now, I'd love to take the Bible and show you. Just meet me right up here.